All right. Hello, everybody. We're back at it. Another road reflection coming at you. Got a whole new notebook for you guys today that I'm excited about. Uh, I think this is the fourth notebook for road reflections that I've got. That's pretty cool, I think. <laughs> um, I'm doing all right today. Got got to be got to work out a little bit, which is good, which is always nice when you uh, you do a little working out, move the muscles around a little, you know, get all that going. So physically, I feel pretty good. Still, I mean, you know, mental health wise, getting there. Uh, aside from that, um, I. Uh, I will be doing, I mean, I've got a bunch of projects that I'm going to work out, work on, but uh, partly one of the things that I'm going to be doing soon is putting up the tickets for the uh, Forkful of Noodles live virtual stand-up comedy shows, uh, and like I mentioned in yesterday's video, I'll be doing those once a month because it's probably what I can do, but starting in February, not only will, will those be something that I'll, I'll be doing... But I'll have an extra live stream on Mondays um, as well. So so that'll be Monday and Fridays will be the live stream days. Um, and then once a month on uh, on Fridays will we'll also be, uh, you know, an, uh, a, a virtual comedy show as well. Thursdays will still be Taboo Table Talk. And then Monday mornings you'll get a new forkful. Um, but based on this new schedule, there'll probably be a little bit, maybe a week or two laps on the uh, on on the forkful schedule, I think we're almost at like 200, 240 episodes or something like that. Uh, maybe maybe uh, just just around there, but we're approaching two hundred and fifty. We're approaching three hundred on the forkfuls um, that I'm that I'm pretty excited about actually. Um, so if if I remember, I'll do something special for three hundred. If I remember, I'm really bad at those things. Uh, but other than that, I'm going to work on some t-shirt designs as well based on some of the, the posters and, and, and cover images for the past Forkfuls and Citizen Revolution shows. Um, so, you know, if, if you've come to those shows, you've seen those images, you, you know what those images are talking about, and I'll probably add some a little bit of text to it so it'll be like a nice little graphic tee. Um, and, uh, and I'll probably continue to go back to Teespring. That's, that's the, the site that I've, I used before. Uh, they're, they're, um, I don't know. I, I think they're slightly more expensive, but, but they're good quality and they offer a wide variety of products that you can put your designs on and stuff. So, you know, if t-shirts aren't your bag, it might be a fucking mug or a, a phone case or, or a mask or something that you can purchase with uh, with some of those designs. Uh, so so th those options are, are going to be available uh, relatively soon. Again, just, you know, a little reminder of why some of those things are late is because is it's all me. <laughs> I don't have uh, I don't have any other employees. I don't have a, a designer that I go to. I, I do the designs myself. I have a degree in graphic design, so uh, it's nice to use that degree for something. Um, so, yeah, so a little... I, I appreciate the patience. Uh, I'll be putting up some new stuff on the band camp as well. Some uh, uh, bonus stuff on the band camp for the sustaining members. Uh, if you choose to go to the band camp route for the sustaining membership. So... Uh, those are some of the things that that are that are uh, that are coming up. Um, I'm trying to keep myself motivated, uh, and also, you know, it's it's a striking balance of keeping myself motivated to do all this stuff, but also not burn out and get exhausted, and and still have time for, um, you know, a little socializing, a little little friend time, a little family time, that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, uh, I think that's that covers. Uh, pretty much all of the all of the announcements, and once once I make this lane change and go through this light I'll, and and merge here, I will be able to take a look at the notes, and we can dive into our stories. Um, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are having uh, a swell week. Um, 
and and things are things are headed in the direction that you uh, you want them to head in your life. I hope that's that's happening. Uh, so, all right, cool. I can actually shift here. Great. So, I think now is the time to shift into uh, into into the topics of of the day here. Uh, I want to talk about Andrew Cuomo. We're going to talk about the the Cuomes today. The old Cuomeister. Uh, I don't know if those are any of the nicknames that he has for himself, but I, I just decided to give him some of those nicknames. Uh, turns out, the state of New York has been throwing away vaccines. And it's not what you think, right? It's not like all of a sudden the state of New York is like, but the microchips are they're switching our DNA using radio frequencies or whatever conspiracy theory comes out of the, uh, the deep into the QAnon anti-vax world. Uh, and I'm not going to go into, you know, a whole debate on vaccines or not. Look, if you're, if you're an anti-vaxxer and you're, and you're not for it, okay, you don't need to come at people and, and and yell at them. And, and look, if, if you're somebody that's pro-vaccine, you know, somebody that's anti-vax, don't, don't shit on them for it. You know what I mean? Have a, have a, a a reasonable conversation. I feel like this notion of civil discourse is is out the window and the the lack of civil discourse that we've seen in our society has probably led us to the to the point that we've um, it's one of the contributing factors to um, why we are where we are folks but here's here's basically what happened on December 28th uh, Andrew Cuomo took time away uh, from his riveting, uh, television series Cuomo and the COVID, uh, and he he signed an executive order that basically says that if any medical institution or facility or anything like that decides that they are going to vaccinate people by skipping the lines, right? Uh, meaning, you know, category one A is for essential workers that work in the medical field and nursing homes, and you know. You want to start vaccinating elderly people, 75 and older, or something along those lines. Well, if you do that when it's not approved by, by the Quomeister, uh, then you're going to get penalized. A large financial penalty, as well as revoking your medical license. They will, they, so, and, and so you're, now I know a lot of people are thinking, well, yeah, pro- good, because you shouldn't be. You shouldn't be vaccinating people that don't need the vaccine first. And yes, that's true. Uh, but there's also the principle of trying to get this thing, trying to get as many people vaccinated as quickly as possible uh, is also part of the goal. So where is this issue coming in of, of, of throwing in the vaccines, right? That's probably what you guys are wondering about. So clinics, smaller clinics are the ones that are going to be affected and, and the ones that are being affected by this the most because that's where a lot of the throwing away is happening so smaller clinics you know will probably get a smaller amount of people coming to them so anywhere between like 10 and 15 people Uh, and you know they're usually in rural areas or low-income neighborhoods so again this is affecting poor people in the state of new york and basically you know the one so like one vial of moderna uh which i think is is probably going to become a a much better and more accessible vaccine just based on the fact that you don't have to refrigerate it uh as long as or 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 at the extreme temperatures is the pfizer vaccine and now you also have the astrazeneca vaccine coming out that um correct and, and feel free to correct me if i'm wrong in the comment section but I believe that one doesn't need refrigeration. Um, like it's recommended to be refrigeration, but it's but it won't it won't expire. Like like that that one I guess farm tech or something or, or pharmacist or whatever just removed a whole bunch of fucking like five hundred per people's worth of vaccines uh, and just set them out overnight and just destroyed the vaccine because the Moderna vaccine still needs some form of refrigeration. The AstraZeneca one probably won't. Um, so it would be better in that regard. And, and I think they're doing some additional testing with it. So there, there might be more safety uh, with that AstraZeneca vaccine. But again, um, I'm, I'm going off a very 
limited basic knowledge of stuff I've heard through headlines and things of that sort. So uh, I apologize if the information isn't 100% accurate in regards to the AstraZeneca vaccine. Um, but uh, going back to the Moderna vaccine, it's, it's one vial of Moderna vaccine has 10 vaccinations in it. Uh, so let's say you're a clinic and you only get 12 to 15 people coming into your clinic. Well, that means that you definitely still have to purchase two vials of the Moderna vaccine. So you vaccinate the 12 to 15. Now you have, you have uh, five to eight more doses of the vaccine to give away. According to this executive order put forward uh, by uh, Andrew Cuomo of the hit series uh, Cuomo and the COVID, uh, you can only you, you have to find somebody that uh, fits the bill. So if it's Group 1A and Group 1A is uh, healthcare workers and, and nursing home workers, then you got to go find them before this vaccine will just expire, even if it's refrigerated. And some some there there's stories of some you know clinics doing that where they'll where they'll. Uh, call nursing homes and they'll call hospitals they'll call fire departments and wherever they're giving the vaccine and be like hey could you use an extra you know five to eight doses of the vaccine we got extras and and we can't we can't use them and if you can't then you have to throw it away and in a lot of cases right those those bigger organizations like those nursing homes bigger hospitals uh, probably fire departments too can order an excess of the vaccine. You know? Like, they can say, oh, we account for uh, 20,000 people, so what we're going to do is order 25,000 doses of the vaccine. Just so we have some extras. And, And, you know, who knows? Maybe they do, maybe they don't. But having a little bit more is better than having less, right? And and now, right now, there's a there's a major supply problem in, in regards with the vaccine. There, there, the, America is not making enough to vaccinate all its people, to vaccinate people on the on the scale that it was anticipating this vaccination to take place. So Cuomo's idea, and this is this is very capitalist of him, is the best way to do this properly is if you can't find somebody and the vaccines run out, you just got to throw it away. Or else you get a million dollar fine and your medical license revoked. It's very Crime Bill 94 of a, a, a Andrew Cuomo, isn't it? That's very, that's very smart on crime of Andrew Cuomo, isn't it? If you, if you missed the reference of that, uh, 94 crime bill is what Joe Biden is known for, uh, and smart on crime is what Kamala Harris is known for. Uh, so, making that comparison. But you know, who does this benefit? Let's say that let's say that larger hospitals decide to just give additional vaccines for for people, right? Let's say that they go, oh, you know what? Uh, we have an additional 10,000 doses. And we ran out of people to give it to. Fuck it. Let's put out a call and get some get other people to register and come get the vaccine. And whether they're in the grouping that we that that is that is now being determined to get the vaccine or not, it doesn't fucking matter. We're going to get these people the vaccine because everybody needs to be vaccinated. And they get hit with a million dollars, uh, and 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 uh, the 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 revocation of of medical licenses, and guess what? The hospital can very easily afford that million dollars and they will probably sue the state. And if there is an insurance company or, or, or a, a pharmaceutical industry that is connected to this hospital that says, hey, we need this hospital. Guess what? That suit will just go away. They'll say, you know what? Make it a million five, uh, you know, and uh, give this person a disciplinary record and fucking move on. And they'll move on. But these clinics, these clinics can't afford that. Even if they say we're not going to revoke your medical license, but you give us a million five, smaller clinics don't have that kind of fucking money. 
So who does this affect? It affects the clinic. So now the clinic will likely have to shut down because they can't afford this fine. And all they were trying to do is vaccinate people in their communities and make sure that this this vaccine, whose supply is not being met with the demand, is being given to as many people as they possibly can give it to. So Andrew Cuomo, once again, is, is targeting small clinics and poor neighborhoods, rural and low-income neighborhoods. Those are the ones that are going to be affected by a law like this. Now, if, if Cuomo was as amazing as what he was, he would have figured something out, right? He would have not gone this direction. And by the way, this is the way that capitalism operates. Uh, capitalism operates on waste, because if you create more waste, that's another thing that you like. N- now you have to pay somebody else to take away the waste. And not only that, but if you create waste, that means that there is more opportunity for supply, right? So more people have to buy more shit. It can reach this endless consumerism. And even in the world of the vaccine, it's not about getting the right amount of vaccine. And if you have a little bit of excess, let's give it to the people that need this vaccine. Let's bump a couple people up in the line. It's throw it away because who cares? The wastefulness will just mean that, um, you know, we'll, we'll just keep buying more vaccines. But clearly that's not working. And another another example of how capitalism is failing. Another example of why people should not be supporting this economic system based on backwards ideologies. So, here's something that I think could have very easily been implemented instead of signing an executive order that is going to essentially uh, economically cripple uh, rural and low-income neighborhoods and small clinics that people depend on. Now, don't forget, Andrew Cuomo, right before the pandemic started, when people knew that the coronavirus was still in effect, cut 900 beds out of a Brooklyn hospital cut $400 million out of Medicaid in the state of New York. Why? So he could give tax breaks to rich people that might vacation in the Finger Lakes, that might want to own a vacation home in the Finger Lakes. He also didn't take the pandemic seriously when it started. When he realized that he could kind of use this as political currency, he jumped on board with it. He was like, okay, let's do this. Today is Saturday. All right. Can we all confirm? Can we go around confirming Saturday, 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 Saturday? Literally something he did on one of his fucking, you know, his television show that he produces, Cuomo and the COVID. But that's how it operates. And here's the thing, man, is he's gotten enough attention uh, and and enough of his fucking awful health care policy, health care and economic policies will get shoved under the uh, under the rug. Not swept, jammed under the rug. And it's, you know, it's it's going to look all weird and lumpy and everybody's like, what's underneath the fucking rug? And people will be like, shush, 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 shush. This guy is uh, probably going to be primarying, um, most likely primarying uh, Biden or Harris, uh, depending on <laughs> the state of that, uh, state of those affairs, in, tw- in, in, in four years, in four to six years. He'll be he'll be the pri- he'll be primary. I mean, the guy's written a book about leadership. Of course, he's gonna fucking primary them. You wrote a book about leadership in a state that fucking uh, the, that in a state where you're responsible for people not having access to health care. 
not and that's the key word there too that they use right the the anti medicare for all people the anti universal healthcare people is access to healthcare that's that's what they throw out there right there he's not even he's not even putting that up he just wants to be a billionaire butt buddy But he's one of those people that's deified in our culture. And when you deify somebody, you forget that you're allowed to challenge your leaders. And when you deify somebody like that, you walk yourself right into some form of authoritarianism. Let's move to our second topic of conversation uh, I want to talk about Josh Hawley because I hadn't heard of this cat until um, until January 6th when the whole insurrection event happened. Uh, so Josh Hawley is a Republican congressperson. I'm blanking on whether he's a senator or a representative. If you, if you know if Hawley is if a senator or a representative, leave a comment because I can't remember <laughs> Right now, but he's but he's a congressperson. I'll 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 use I'll use that uh, descriptor for him. Uh, he beat Claire McCaskill by a hundred thousand votes. Who is Claire McCaskill? Uh, Claire McCaskill is the MSNBC neoliberal that went on MSNBC several different times uh, to shit on Bernie. To, to shit on anybody that supported Bernie as a Bernie bro, you know, that uh, it, it's, it's, you know, the same type of people that whatever I point out that, uh, you know, they're, they're members of Biden's ca- cabinet that are just a bunch of neoliberal war hawks uh, that, that use the term Medicare to just mean access to health care. And they're and they're like fucking over progressive ideologies. Uh, they, they call me a brochialist lunatics these are people again it's the deification of of your of your elected officials of of any sort of person that's in a position of power or leadership they these people deify them and worship them um not being able to see uh when they're being duped or when 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 this person is actually doing something harmful uh and destructive Anyway, Claire McCaskill is, is one of those neoliberals that she, that she attacked Bernie and Bernie supporters. Uh, said Bernie has no friends. He's got no friends in Congress, you guys. Oh, man, he's got no... What about Joe Biden? He keeps saying Joe Biden is his best friend. He's like my friend Joe Biden all the time. That's what he does. Let me tell you something, my friend Joe Biden. Got to be able to hold your leader's feet to the fire. If you can't do that, then then you don't. we don't live in a real democracy. Uh, we're walking ourselves into a, a different version of authoritarianism. Um, Claire McCaskill also said, uh, boy, Bernie's just an angry guy. He's so angry. He's yelling about all these people that lose their health care and then they die. Why do you have to be so angry about all these people dying? Can't you just be chill, Bernie, and let people die? That's Claire McCaskill. <laughs> Uh, nobody tell her about Joe Biden <laughs> because every time you talk to Joe Biden about his record uh, or his men- deteriorating brain condition uh, and dementia, he just yells at you. And but that's not nope. You're not supposed to talk about that. Don't bring. Why would you bring that up? That's always what I get from. Why would you bring that up, Chris? What the fuck? Do you want Trump to win? Well, Trump's lost. Now, can we talk about how angry fucking Joe Biden is? Uh, over nothing? Like, at least Bernie Sanders has a fucking real cause that he's pissed off about. Like, people are losing health care. They're going into medical debt. We're the only fucking country that has that, and a bunch of people are dying because of it. That's a very legitimate reason to get mad. Joe Biden is like, hey, Joe, it seems like you're not all there mentally. You want to take a test to make sure... And then he yells at you and, and says black people are less diverse than Mexicans. Remember when that happened? Okay, good. Uh, back to Josh Hawley. So Josh Hawley beat Claire McCaskill. One of the things that, that uh, got McCaskill 
beaten in in uh, uh, the uh, the race. There is she kind of portrayed him as as a country bumpkin, you know, this farm boy, this rural hick that you know who cares? He can't. He's not smart because he's from a farm. I'd like to see Claire McCaskill grow corn for 350 million people. I'd like to see her grow some wheat. I'd like to see her grow anything. Like a backbone. Uh, You know, to push back against (laughs) the the, the neoliberalism uh, that is fucking over the people that you would have represented had you won. Um... But this is, I mean, this is liberal elitism, right? That's that's what Claire McCaskill wound up representing. In middle America, that's what she ended up representing. To the working class, that's what she ended up representing. It's just liberal elitism. And this is part of the reason why I think people don't like intellectualism in, in America. They have a problem with intellectualism in America. Because if you come off smart, it come, it, it, it seems like you're talking down to people. And that's what they do. A, a, a lot of liberals do. I mean, I get the same thing, too, is is when I point out shit from, oh, that's just a straw man. You wouldn't understand because you're not smart enough to understand what a straw man argument is. No, I do. I'm, I'm, this isn't a straw man. This is a fact about this individual's record and the way that they carry them. And you can see it here. And they're like, uh, 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 uh. that video is a fallacy. What? shit like that and the, and it's like oh you wouldn't understand you don't get it because you're crazy because you don't love the same candidate I do so you must be nuts that's the vitriol that I get from liberals but that's what Claire McCaskill does too is is when you portray your opponent when you portray anybody that that isn't the same as you as someone less than, someone not as smart, some kind of fucking country bumpkin, that, you know, these fucking, these fucking trade jobs are, are considered to be less smart, less intellectually capable, is all bullshit. Dude, I don't know anything about, elect, elect, be, you know, being an electrician or, or fixing a fucking furnace or pipes in my house. Like, I don't fucking know that shit. I know history and design principles and philosophy and nerd shit. But to just come out and attack people because they are different and to look at people in trades and look down on them. I mean, that again, that's part of the reason why intellectualism is looked down upon. Claire McCaskill lost to Josh Hawley. Now, Josh Hawley, this person that Claire McCaskill lost to, is a is a, uh, a vehement Trump supporter and one of the people that was, uh, even after everything was said and done, uh, someone that, um, you know, fucking was calling for the insurrection and, and saying that, you know, Joe Biden didn't win the election and the electoral pro- electoral college process is all bunk and bullshit and blah blah blah. Uh, which look, the, the, without a doubt, the American uh, electoral system um, is filled with fraud, just not the way that they're calling it. In fact, if you want to sit there and say that there was fraud in the general elections, it was done by Republicans to throw uh, to throw communities of color off the voter rolls. Because of change of addresses, because of signature discrepancies, you name it. And some people didn't even get their ballots because the Postal Service has been gutted by a bipartisan bill. Democrats and Republicans are are responsible for that. And I will keep reminding you people of that until it sinks in. Did a whole show about the Post Office and how it's been gutted. whole show about it but no I mean that's you know that's the reality is is that there is fraud 
there is election chicanery. Just not in the way that these fucking insurrectionists thought of it. That's not the way that Trump and, 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 and Josh Hawley and Ted Cruz or any of those people said it was. In the general election, it's always, almost always, the fucking Republicans that caused the problem. Almost always. So it's like, really? Are you guys just throwing yourselves down the fucking river? Is that, is that the fucking plan here? <laughs> is the Republican Party is like, we're cannibalizing ourselves. Election fraud. Joe Biden can't be the real president. How so? Because we rigged it to make sure that he wasn't the right president. How could our rigging fail? That's really what it is. They're just mad that their fucking rigging failed. <laughs> but the Dems are not innocent in this either, right? The Democrats are not innocent in it. They, if, you, if you look at the primary, the last two elections they fucked over Bernie Sanders. The exit polls were way the fuck off. Most countries, if you have a 2% discrepancy in your exit poll, you got to redo the count. And in this election, in the primaries, minimum of 4.8%. Minimum. Minimum. The minimum was twice that of what is acceptable. But no, we're the greatest democracy in the world, right? Our, our election system is bar none. It's the greatest election system. We're the champions of democracy when we can't even get the primaries right. So, election fraud exists, just not in the way that these insurrectionists thought of it. But he kept talking about it over and over again. And I guess he lost a book deal. He wrote a book about big tech and uh, big tech censorship or some shit like that. And because he kept suggesting, you know, telling people like, oh yeah, you should go and... And the Electoral College itself is is problematic all in all. And and I, I will be honest, I have not done enough research for me to um, for me to talk about the Electoral College in a, 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 a in the right way uh, to articulate exactly what is and isn't wrong with it uh, but that is uh, that is part of my plan you guys I will be I will be doing that it's part of the long list of shit that I want to research and address and talk about and make a video or talk about it in some way, shape, or form. Um, you know, and, and what was happening, too, was just sort of theater. It wasn't any sort of substantial, meaningful uh, way to, 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 to say Joe Biden is the president. It's just, it's just a show. It's just a ritual. It's like this empty gesture that they just do because they do. Right. And that's what they went after, which is which is kind of sad that they went after this empty gesture to prove like which also kind of, I think, shows the the level of desperation. And you got to look at you got to look at someone like Holly, who looks at that desperation and is taking advantage of it uh, through and through. Yeah. So Holly gets his book taken off and he's screaming censorship, censorship. Simon and Schuster won't print his book anymore. Uh, they don't want to have anything to do with it. So they're like, we're done. You know what's funny is is uh, public publishers like Simon & Schuster will, will publish books, you know, from warmongers and, and people that decline people health care and all this other shit. And, they'll, and those books will still get published under Simon & Schuster. Uh, it's just when you attack... A symbol, and I'm not. I, this is not an argument to make. Like, oh, what they did was no. I'm not saying the what the what the what happened on January 6th was right. Uh, if you've watched any of the shit that I've done uh, over the last two weeks, then you will know my where my where I actually stand on that. My point being is, look, I think I think people losing health care, um, and I think uh, people committing war crimes. And, um, you know, starting wars for profit are equally as bad as these people. Equally as bad as, as, as Josh Hawley saying that, you know, you should storm the Capitol and what you did was right. That's my point. 
But here's the thing, right? Dude's a Republican, probably champions the free market. Well, great. Simon & Schuster is a private org- a, a private company. They're allowed to decline business from whoever they choose unless you can prove bias in some way, shape, or form. Uh, they they separated with you for ideological reasons. And that, and I think that, that's probably fine, right? Within the, within the context of the free market, go to a different publisher. I don't know. I'm sure the publisher, uh, the, the, the publishing company that, that uh, the publishing company that made Mein Kampf is still around. Maybe you can publish your book through them. I don't know. But he's going to try to sue them over a, a First Amendment issue. Look, you can also self-publish the book. I made a comic book when I was 15 and I self-published it. Went through Lulu.com. I don't even know if that's a, a real thing now. I know Amazon Web Services took down Parler, but I'm sure if... if uh, <laughs> I'm sure if you go up to Jeff Bezos and you were like, Hey bro, I'll give you... I'll give you another fucking tax loophole. Not only will you not have to pay it, but Amazon will also just make money every time tax season comes around. I'll do that. If you do that, I bet he'll he'll fucking publish your book. Unapologetically, he'll fucking publish your book. Champion that free market, bitch. Now, here's the thing. With how much he's lined himself up with Trump and galvanized his base, uh, genuinely probably because these people got galvanized and encouraged to be, you know, do all the things that they've been doing, uh, I would wager to bet that this dude is going to run for president in 2024 slash 26. I would wager to bet that this guy is going to be groomed as some sort of presidential candidate for the GOP. And the GOP, once again, will will run on some kind of populist principles. And this guy can probably carry that on. He went to Stanford and Yale. He went to fucking, you know, prep school. He's probably really well connected to a bunch of other shithole billionaires that will do the same thing that they did for Trump, which is fund the campaign and, and be in the shadows and get this dude elected. And whether he wins or not is is very much dependent um, on what happens with the Biden Harris administration. How they address and talk to rural communities. If if they do the same thing that Claire McCaskill did, then you know that's that's it. You're you're gonna there's gonna be another fucking right-wing populist it's going to be called out and and again we'll we'll see neoliberalism give rise to neo-fascism it's a pattern that i would i myself and a ton of other people have talked about and addressed That goes ignored by the liberal class. So, you know, that's one of the things that's coming down the pipeline, probably, is 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 Josh Hawley's going to make some sort of presidential run. And who knows, but based on all this, he might write another book... Uh, you know, about his treatment as a conservative and, and say some shit about, you know, oh, the way conservatives are treated, blah, blah, blah. And he can write a, another 250-page book about that. It can be somewhat of a, a, a autobiographical book, and people will eat that shit up. And if he gets a regular spot on Fox... With Donnie T. I 
I think I he'll be set. This is somebody we should probably uh, keep an eye on for a little while. All right, I want to get to the last story uh, of the uh, of of the day. Uh, Gavin Newsom, Democrat from California, California. Uh, Gavin Newsom, uh, another person I don't particularly care for, and I don't think anybody really should care for this person. Um, he uh, he received some criticism that California is not really good a good place for businesses, and his response was. Uh, yeah, it is. Look at how many billionaires we have here. That's cool. That's cool, bro. Oh, y'all got all those billionaires? Do you have a record on the number of billionaires in one in a confined area? What a weird brag for you to make. He, he So he claimed that, you know, California depends on these billionaires um, on their income tax. But at the end, regardless of what happens, who are the ones that suffer out of this are are middle class and low income people. They're the ones that are having the hardest time in the very liberal state of California. You know, go to San Francisco. It's it's impossible to be a teacher, a full-time teacher, maybe making $50,000 a year. I, I don't know if that's if that's uh, high or low in, in regards to teacher salaries or not, but let's say $50,000. Let's say you make $50,000 as a full-time teacher. No fucking way you can live in San Francisco. No fucking way. When I was there, the the economic system is so bad that even the homeless people are like, well, what am I going to ask you for money for? It's not like you have it. There's That's that's what the homeless people do. They don't ask you for money. They're just like, yeah, you're probably fucking broke too, man. It's Gavin Newsom's California. Then he goes on to sing the praises of, um, you know, some of these companies that are in California. Uh, specifically, starts start singing praises to the gig economy companies like Lyft and DoorDash. Lyft and DoorDash uh, just spent a hundred million dollars to ensure that um, the people that work for their company are not considered employees. But they're going to be con- continue to considered as independent contractors, so that you know, again, the board and the CEOs of these companies can just cash out, and they can make way more money. Meanwhile, if you're part of any of these gig economy companies, Instacart, Lyft, Grubhub, who like you got to worry about your own car, you got to worry your your 1099s, so you lose more in taxes. You don't have health care. You don't have any benefits. You don't have an hourly wage. I mean, Instacart, I drove for Instacart a little for a little bit just to make some extra money last uh, summer and last winter. I didn't work for them long because I started seeing how much of a, you know, bit of a scam they run is. So when you go from, you know, you, you, when you start, you go to a grocery store, pick up the groceries, and then you drive to the place after the person's dress and drop off the groceries and then you go to a different and then you go to the store again whatever store you you know happens to be the the thing that they, they selected so between dropping off groceries and going to the next store you don't get paid for that even though you're technically still on the clock they're timing you to get there and all that jazz right you're spending fuel you're you're putting you're putting wear and tear on your car. You don't you don't you don't get the mileage money for that. 
I addressed that with them, and they were just like, yeah, okay, who could do that? Well, too bad. <laughs> like, that's kind of what they said. Sorry, but not really. So, you know, these companies take their 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 independent contractors for granted. They they don't they can't unionize. They can't fight back against this thing. Really really what what should happen with all of these companies all together is a is a general strike of every single gig economy worker. And if you're somebody that uses gig economy and you know people that all that, that like friends of yours that work for one of these gig economy companies and they do go on strike, then you should probably help out that that person. Taking care of each other. That's how that works. Solidarity. That's how that works. And Gavin Newsom supports this. He thinks this is a good idea. It champions these businesses because it allows them to be billionaires. The more billionaires there are in California, the better California will look. And this guy, again, much like Cuomo, will probably make a run in in 2024-26. And I would hope that there is nobody that supports him. I would hope that the people that, you know, supported someone like Mayor Pete or uh, Kamala Harris or even Elizabeth Warren would not support these two clowns that are anti-worker, anti-healthcare, they're anti-people, they are pro-corporate. They like rich people because rich people help them become rich and that's all they give a fuck about. They don't give a fuck about you or your family. At least the Republicans have the, 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 the respect to just come out and be like, yeah, we don't give a shit about you or your family. You're, you're on your own. You figure it out for yourself. I'm going to figure this shit out for me. I don't represent... I represent you to get your votes. And then once I get into office, I don't give a fuck until it's time to get your votes again. At least the Republicans have the gall, the the, the, the honesty to do that. Now, uh, the last thing I want to talk about and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this, is the inauguration. Uh, I watched none of it. <laughs> I just didn't. I had better, I had better shit to do. I, like I said, I, 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 I exercised. I watched an anime that I haven't seen in a long time that I actually enjoy. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll catch clips of it later or something. But I, I just had better shit to do with my day um, than, than celebrate, you know, uh, slightly left Trump. And that's what Joe Biden is. He's slightly less left Trump. His record of abhorrent criminal justice with the crime bill, the, the uh, police bill of rights, during Nixon, he was pro-drug war. The, the treatment of Anita Hill... The fact that he's so proud of the Iraq war. He said he's going to veto Medicare for all. And he, and he basically said nothing will fundamentally change. And nothing will. Nothing will. We will go back to that status quo. We will go back to that point where... You know, people are still starving. The, the, the bread lines will grow longer. The amount of people in medical debt will continue to grow evictions will continue, more people will wind up homeless, and then we'll criminalize homelessness, and we'll criminalize poverty. He's already lied to us. Even before the inauguration, remember how he said when Georgia goes blue, you'll get $2,000 checks? We'll make that happen? Well, guess what? He, He got us on a technicality. I talked about it yesterday. I addressed a bunch of shit yesterday, where I basically pointed out he's not even in office, and he's already fucking over the middle class. He's already fucking over the working class people of this country.
$1,400 checks after he... So he basically went back on a promise, right? I didn't watch the inauguration because what's the point? Nothing. Nothing's. Nothing's going to change. This isn't some sort of. I, I see people celebrating this as though this is some kind of like groundbreaking, monumental thing. Is it's not. Like we're going to get respect and decency back into the White House. We're not. Would someone that stands for respect and decency, uh, after after civil rights leaders express the issues that the communities of color across the nation have with Joe Biden and what they're asking from him, his first response is, look, I got to go. And then he spends 21 minutes yelling at them, yelling at them. That's not respect. That's not decency. going to bring empathy to the White House. Yeah, how many people is he going to give health care to? Is it none? He's going to give access to health care, which is a Republican talking point. All of these things that I bring up, why do I bring it up? I, I want to, you know, if you're, if you're a hardcore Biden supporter and you believe that the Democratic Party is going to save us, which it won't, um, and, and history dictates that, uh, here's, here's my, my, you know, little message to, 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 to those supporters. I would say talk to your progressive friends that don't support Joe Biden and talk to them with that respect that you want to see in the White House, with that empathy you want to see at the White House. Because I'll tell you something right now, uh, selective empathy is not fucking empathy. It's you being a douchebag. It's you justifying being an asshole to people you don't care for that think differently than you. And selective empathy is justification of not realizing what causes people to land in the belief systems that, that they do land into. To look at the root causes of these problems. That's what selective empathy does. So if you have true empathy, you should figure out where these people came from. The people that you don't like. Is it? And, and primarily, I mean, the Democrats hate the progressive left more than they do the right. Uh, because the Democrats are a party of the right. Anyway, they're, they're a right-wing party. America has two right-wing parties. That's the reality. Now, if you're sitting there and going, oh, but Chris, how could you say something like that? Now, obviously, I have a, a plethora of, of videos that you can watch and take part uh, and engage in conversation with, but you can also ask me. And if you if you want to ask me and you have a respectful tone, I will answer you. If you want to ask me and you want to be an asshole about it and make your snarky little jokes, call me a Trump supporter, a deplorable. That's something that liberals have called me. Uh, say that I'm uh, causing the death and destruction of people. That's something the liberals have accused me of. They get mad that I'm not the token. It's a weird sense of betrayal, I think, is they look at me and they go, well, you must be for the Democrat. You have to be for the Democrat. You're a brown kid. You're an immigrant. And yeah, the Democrats haven't been great on immigration either. I would say if you really want things to be better and different, then it's time to engage in conversation, not insults. Don't think that you're better than people just because you're a liberal. Because progressives don't think that they're better than liberals. Progressives just want things to be better for everybody. 
have that conversation. Be respectful. Don't shove your fucking insults at them. Don't pretend to be more elite than, than you know, what you are. Because Biden's already shown you his cards. It's up to you to what it's up to you to accept those cards for what they are. The dude already lied about the two thousand dollar checks on a technicality. Dude already shit on civil rights leaders, screamed and yelled at them. He's yelled about he's he's he had an awful reaction to Tara Reid. He has a bad attitude in general. He lost. I mean, he could he could barely keep his cool. He hates Trump so much because Trump is a mirror to him. Their backgrounds might be slightly different, and they are different. But, I mean, they wound up being very similar. Joe Biden is going to bring unity to the country? No, 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 no. I, I, I very much doubt it. That's a very egotistical, narcissistic thing to think. If you want to have a rational conversation... Talk to your progressive friends. Don't insult them. Don't shit on them. Don't yell at them when they say they don't like the the politician you've decided to deify. If not, then on the ground floor, we are contributing to the same level of divide that is being manufactured up at the top. There is still time for you on the ground floor to bridge some divides. I think that's where we're going to end things off today. Thank you guys for tuning in and watching. As per always, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the share button. Make sure you're subscribed to my channels. And if you're sick of the YouTube and the Facebook censorships and you want a platform that is going to support uh, content creators like myself, Ron Pacone, Graham Elwood, Eleanor Goldfield, Kim Iverson, uh, Nico House, uh, Jimmy Dore, uh, Convo Couch, Action for Assange. I mean, the list goes on and on. Uh, go to rockfin.com. Go to rockfin.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, follow me there. If you want to endorse my channel and subscribe to my channel and pay 10 bucks a month, you get all the premium content, not just from me, but all of the content creators I just listed off. Um, and look, if you're, if you're, you know, you're somebody that tunes into YouTube just for, specifically for me or, or just a handful of people, uh, then my, my suggestion to you would be to just go to uh, what, however you, you can contribute to them sustaining, sustainingly monthly contributions and do that, um, you know, pending you're on financial stable ground. If you're not on financial stable ground, still a ton of free stuff out there uh, from me. Um, but, you know, the, like I said, the best thing to do is hit that share button, hit that like button, uh, leave a comment, just even if it's just, this was great, thank you, whatever. You, you know, I usually try to respond to those comments as well. Um, so, yeah, with all that being said, uh, we'll, I'll be back on Friday with the live stream. Um, keep an eye out for the tickets for the virtual shows. Go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. Sign up for my email list. It's also the place where you can get, uh, you know, may, become a sustaining member, make a one-time donation, check out all my stand-up comedy albums, a ton of stuff to do, K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, Other than that, you guys are all great, and I'll see you guys soon.